figure skating championship of France in two categories in their age groups, and they're doing the same thing in Japan now, and, but they're coming back to France. So, and these are his rules for being an entrepreneur. I've seen countless entrepreneurs invest months in research, spreadsheets, and PowerPoints. Rather have a plan that fits on two pages that your grandmother could understand, then proceed immediately to point two. Sell something, anything. Get out there and sell your service and collect the money. Get a client who will sing your praises and don't care too much about the margin you make. If you can do this, You'll have validation that someone in the world actually wants what you think they'll need. The rest is commentary, as they say. Three, start young. It's true that it gets harder the older you get. Some people fancy the idea of being an entrepreneur but lack the stomach for it because starting too late or simply can't afford the risk. You'll probably fail a few times, which is the, what the true entrepreneur always seems to power through. If you can imagine yourself failing, picking yourself up and running at it again, look elsewhere. Take advice, but only from successful entrepreneurs. If you're any good, you'll find yourself surrounded by those willing to lend counsel. Business schools are filled with professors of entrepreneurship who've never done it successfully themselves. Avoid these like the plague. Study accounting. The course I took at Harvard Extension School turned out to be indispensable. And I don't mean finance or economics. I mean reading income statements and balance sheets. You'll be more effective in dealing with financial people. People never fully trust those they think aren't watching the pennies. And be more credible with eventual partners and acquirers. Keep an eye on the end. I started by keeping an eye on the exit. And I've worked in an industry filled with very smart people, but many never considered an exit strategy until it was far too late. There's no comparison in the amount of money you take off the table to say nothing of the difference in long-term capital gains. Decisions you make in the very early days can lead logically to an exit or may ultimately bar the door. Last thing is, the man I interviewed about hiring and saying that somebody busy will take 16 seconds to look at your resume also tells me, if you have an interview, what the interviewer is really interested in and make sure that you know the answer to this going in, what can you do to add value to my company? Even if you're gonna be an intern, what can you do add value to my company. So, for all of you, go out there and try and add value to everybody's lives you interact with. And thanks for having me. And if we got a little time, happy to answer questions. Yeah, so we have uh, a little time now to answer questions, and then John and I are gonna go down to Little Lingo, get some lunch, and eat it in room 504. So if anybody feels like chatting a little bit over some lunch, we're happy to have you guys come. Um, but, but since you might not be able to stay, or I know a whole bunch of people had classes at one, that's why they had to leave. If you have a question now, why don't you ask it right now? Yes. Um, so in your book, you have a chapter entitled, um, Take the Pros Lunch. Oh, yeah. So um, as a young professional, um, it's hard to try and get your business to do that. Um, do you have any advice for professionals and how to approach your seniors or people? Yeah, well, um, if you go into any business office, I don't care what it is, um, and you look for the oldest woman employee, the oldest man employee, um, and you say, you know, you wouldn't be here this long 
unless you were really smart and great at your job. I'd love it if I could take you to lunch where you actually pay. And just tell me stories about what it was like when you came to work and the lessons you learned. They're going to be so flattered to ask. You don't have to be nervous about it. And nobody is going to say no to you. And nobody else is going to think of asking them to do it. And if it's a big office, I do it with the longest serving man, and then you find the longest serving woman. And, uh, and for instance, um, I'm always working in a book, and I'm working in a book about women. Um, and it's advice from women that men have to know or else they're not going to make it in a modern society. So it's advice from women <coughs> of all ages, from 25 to 95, all kinds of different professions, from law and money and medicine and um, street smart, for instance, and people who are not well known. Like, I've had a woman in my life, um, a woman who's cleaned our house um, for 20 years. And um, my wife <coughs> always would see her and I'd be going to work, so I never had a chance to really talk to her. And my wife died about seven years ago, so I'm a free-range chicken at this point. And, um, and so I've been talking to Diana, uh, my cleaning lady, and she, she's very, very smart. I didn't know how smart, but two years ago, I gave her this theory one day before I went to work. So women are 10 times smarter than the guys and much more practical. And women are so strong. And I went to work. And this is a woman who's had miles of tough stuff in her family. Miles, just horrible stuff. And I came home that night, and she had put a sticky note on one of the tiles in my kitchen. And the sticky note said, we're strong because we have to be. So no one's going to turn you down if you just go in and don't be shy. And uh, they have insecurities too, believe me. You know? And they'd be thrilled to tell you. And one story leads to another. You know? Anybody else? Um, well, thanks for coming, even though you kind of had to. Right? So, <laughs> we'll just say good luck to all of you. Anybody who wants to go down to Little Lingo, grab some sandwich or something, or if you have it yourself, uh, come with.